Mary Spender's guitar stories, six string tales of woe and glory. Send me your guitar stories, and I might choose to read your guitar stories. Hi, my name is Mary Spender, and welcome to episode five of Guitar Stories. If you didn't know, and if you're new to the channel, then you can submit your story of your guitar. Um, check out the details in the description below, but otherwise, let's just get into it. Okay, this one comes from James and it's called Nelsonic Transitone Guitar Story. Hi Mary, I've been enjoying your YouTube videos for some time, so it's great to have the opportunity to contribute. My guitar story features my Campbell American Nelsonic Transitone. This was the first signature guitar created for my guitar hero, Bill Nelson, frontman of the Bebop Deluxe in the 70s, and still recording profusely as a solo artist today with only 100 being made. As a regular on Bill's website forum, when a fellow fan in the US announced that he was being forced to sell his transitone due to financial needs, I jumped at the opportunity to buy it, as another fan who is an expat living in the US was coming over to the UK for Bill's annual convention, which I was also attending. He agreed to bring the guitar with him. This just meant that the vendor had to choreo the guitar to the expat before he left. The vendor said he'd get round to it and there was plenty of time. A few, few days to go and the guitar still hadn't been sent. After frantic chasing up the guitar, finally arrived at the expat's home the evening before he was catching his flight to the UK. The guitar was gratefully received at the convention and I was able to get it signed by Bill during the meet and greet session. I have since expanded my guitar collection considerably but this is still my pride and joy. Regards and keep up the good work, Jim. Ah. <sighs> Look at that transitone. That's awesome. I love the shape. I love the shape. He's, he signed it. Yes, that is where you should sign guitars. Just for anyone who's signing the actual body, remember that there's a nice backplate, perfect for, for signatures. Perfect, what a story. Okay, this very short one comes from Ed. Hi Mary, while I'd hate to be accused of trying to raise the bar, I thought you might like this. This is my 78 Tokai Springy Sound, the first really old guitar I've had. There's no great story behind it, I bought it on Facebook Marketplace, but as you can see, it's popular with Alice my cat and Una my dog. Loving this series, keep up the good work, Ed. Mmm, ginger cats. And great guitar. Love it. Love it. Oh, ginger cats. And obviously Una, the dog. Alice. Alice as a cat name is brilliant. <laughs> I love really human names for animals. I think it's really, really funny. I think I want a cat just named Steve. Steve. <laughs> hmm. Okay, this story comes from an anonymous gentleman. Hello Mary, I have not one, but two wonderful stories to regale you with about two fairly rare guitars I own. Oh, The first one I took into a local dealership to have tuned when I first received it, and until they saw the guitar, they thought I was referencing an acoustic guitar incorrectly. They actually told me, you don't know what you're talking about. Haven't we all been there in a, in a guitar shop? Back in 2012, October, my grandmother of 94 passed away. Her wish was for the seven of nine remaining children to split her belongings equally. As we all sat in and around the house, talking amongst family and remembering visiting our grandmother, the Valley of the Mountains, riding my uncle's horses and many other tales, we got onto the topic of music. My mother's oldest brother, who passed in 69, had a love for music. I've been told many times I remind my family of him because I too have a love of music. As we were sitting there talking about the piles of old 33s and 45s, my mother asks, have you seen my brother's guitar? His 12 string. To which I replied, the Fender Acoustic. Yeah, I've seen it. It's a beautiful sunburst. And she obviously said, you haven't seen his 12 string? My mum starts running upstairs yelling, come here, I want to show you his guitar. As I stand at the bottom saying, mum, I've seen it. It's the Fender. Mum, mum. <laughs> All of a sudden, out of the shadow of the hallway from the room on the left, my mother appears moving swiftly, carrying a slim black case across the small hall to the room on the right. 
Come here, I want you to see his guitar. As I see the sudden swiftness of my mum's figure move across, this is so well written, move across the upstairs hallway, all I can say is, that's not an acoustic, as I run up the stairs. I can imagine you running up the stairs too. <laughs> I know that run. Every time you're so excited. Um, I enter the room right behind my mum who's setting the slim black case onto the bed where two of my first cousins are sitting and ask, what's that? It belonged to Kenneth. As my mum opens the guitar case, she says, I remember sitting on the steps listening to him play this guitar, awestruck by the sound, and I always loved looking at the colour of this guitar. The guitar case opens and we all gasp in unison with, on with my only response being, oh my God, oh my God, do you know what that is? That's a Gibson, a Gibson, a freaking Gibson. <laughs> oh my God. We were all awestruck. My mum talked it over with her brothers and sisters and they agreed I could have the guitar as long as I never sell it, which I never plan on doing. And I had to take and keep his 1962 Sears Roebuck amp with it as well. Later on, someone asked, what was all the excitement about? To which one of my cousins replied, you know those shows where people bid on garbage and someone wins the lottery by finding something rare within a storage container? <laughs> he just won the lottery. When I got back home, I typed in the serial number. It's a 1968 335 TDC 12 string Gibson. Pictures and original receipt attached. Oh my God, that story gave me absolute, absolute chills. <gasps> you found this in an attic. 1968, it's stunning. It's in such good condition and he bought it for $400, which I know wasn't $400 back then, but still. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah, never sell it, never sell it, never, never sell it. That needs to be a family heirloom. Wow, what a story, unnamed person. Really, really appreciate you for sending that in. However, you have a second one, so I'm, I'm just gonna read that out because you just blew me away with the first one. The second guitar was given to me two weeks ago with the stipulation that I do not sell it. <sighs> Keeps happening, doesn't it? Again, I do not plan to. <laughs> nor wish to, it belonged to my great uncle who passed years ago and was given to me by my great aunt. It's a pre-World War II Montgomery Ward Carson J. Robinson guitar made by either Gibson, Martin, Taylor or Grun. I contacted Gibson and they do not have a listing for it because they did not track their guitars during the Great Depression. They also told me it is not in the Kelly Blue Book for guitars either. I don't know of this. After talking it over with my mum's brother, we believe the pickguard was installed after the purchase of the guitar since it covers the art around the sound hole. The screws are crooked and one hole doesn't even have a screw. Thus the story of my two rare guitars is over. Thank you for everything you do and thank you for helping me find my love for playing again. Okay, let's look at this. Ooh. Okay. So you think the pickguard was installed later because it covers the... I don't know. I don't know. It could be. It could be the original. What do you guys think? Okay, can someone tell me more about the Kelly Blue Book? What that means? And the Carson J. Robinson? Please tell me. Please tell me in the comments below. I would love to learn more about that. Um, and, you know, forgive me if I should. I, 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 I'm so excited to learn. All right, next story. This one comes from Justin. Easily my most unique guitar. This is an original Steinberger model GM4S. I'm not 100% sure of the year though. I believe it to be from the 90s. I've tried to look up the serial number and they don't seem to have kept track of them as well as I'd like. I bought this one from the reverb store of a shop in Poughkeepsie, New York called Headless USA, where they collect and do full restorations of original Steinberger guitars with the help of one Jeff Babbitts who used to be production manager at the Steinberger factory. I hope I pronounced that right. This includes fresh paint, brand new hardware made just for them and fresh electronics. I did have the pickups changed to a set of bare knuckles, cool. However, because Steinbergers come standard with active EMGs of which I am not a fan. 
The reason I picked this up is because my favourite band is and always will be Blue Oyster Cult, and their lead guitarist plays Steinbergers almost exclusively. They still tour, believe it or not. I've seen them twice. But Steinberger seems to be somewhat of a forgotten brand these days. They were big in the 80s, being played by such names as Eddie Van Halen, Alan Holdsworth, Mark Knopfler, Andy Summers, Dave Gilmore, Buck Dharma, and Steve Howe, but eventually they were bought by Gibson and production was shut down sometime in the 90s. They were notable for first of all not having any headstock, which requires special double ball ended strings, a unique bridge system called Transtrem that allowed all six strings to be shifted up or down half steps all at the same time, as well as being able to whammy entire chords in tune and unique materials such as carbon fibre. The one I have does not have the Transtrem system, unfortunately, and I'm reasonably sure there's no carbon fibre in it, but it's still a unique and fun instrument anyway. Cheers, Justin. Okay, let me take a look. Ooh, stealthy. Very cool. Very cool. That's fascinating. I think I have sung on stage and I want to say it was in Poughkeepsie. So I traveled around the US in like 2014. Um, uh, one of my, you know, now very old friends, uh, his band were, were playing and they asked me just to get up and sing on stage. It was just in a bar. Get up on stage and sing, um, uh, don't fear the reaper. That's not relevant whatsoever, but a uh, cool a cool little side note and 2014 my god how time has flown This one comes from John. Hi Mary I've been a fan of your music and videos for several years now and I know you played a white silver tone strat style a while back This is my silver tone 1457 I like to think that some kid got this guitar from the Sears catalog after seeing the Beatles on Ed Sullivan this model was produced in 1963 to 1964, so it's five or six years older than I am. And 50 odd years later, it ended up in my hands. When I got it in 2016, it was in rough shape, but the neck was straight and the original lipsticks were intact and in working order. I traded a guy a 12 channel PA mixer for it. The original tuners and bridge were junk. The pots, knobs, pickup switch, jack and pickguard were all missing, so I replaced all of those. The original amp in the case was long gone. I wired it like a telly as opposed to having two stacked volume tone knobs. The white material around the edge of the body was yellowed, probably from years in smoky clubs, but it cleaned up nicely with a bit of bleach and water. Is that how you're meant to clean guitars? Keeping it in tune requires a fair bit of work because of the angle that the strings pass through the aluminium nut, but it plays and bends fairly easy, it has a scale length about the same as a Gibson, and the lipstick pickups have such a unique tone. Not bad for a 50 plus year old guitar made of plywood. Also, please enjoy Evelyn the cat and Marge the dog. <laughs> Evelyn and Marge. Um, okay, so scale length the same as, as a Gibson Les Paul. So short scale, um, okay. Oh look, you've done a great job. Whoa, that neck. <laughs> Good work. And there's Evelyn and Marge. Man, you guys better wait until I get a cat. One day when I get a cat. <sighs> that cat is gonna be the star of this show, whenever that will be. Hmm. Okay, episode five. Massive thanks to everyone who contributed a story, as always. Please submit your story, check out the description. Please subscribe, please comment. Please give this video a thumbs up because it really, really helps the channel. Um, I think that is pretty much all I can ask of you. So otherwise, I will see you very soon.